Welcome to our uh, PM Key Skills Communication Webinar. It's going to shift modes here a little bit and get the video going. There we are. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so this is a continuation in our series of key skills. And um, I, I think we've hit a right topic today because we've got really, really good registration and, and participation today. So really looking forward to this session. We're going to be reopening um, our... Um, our opening piece around the key peeves or pet peeves that you have with uh, when it comes to communication. We're going to come back to this in a few moments. So our hosts today, myself, David Donaldson, uh, presenting, as well as supporting us, Scott Roberts. Um, so you just to, to cover off on our technical issues, uh, you have the ability to raise your hand, uh, agree, disagree, you know, speed up, slow down, that sort of thing. And we have our chat box just below my image there, uh, so you can, you know, at any time type in a message, a comment, uh, please contribute. And of course, as always, we do accept applause. So, <coughs> excuse me, fighting a little bit of a cold. Um, our opening thought today comes from Plato. Uh, wise men speak because they have something to say, fools because they have to say something. And I really liked this quote as a, as a thought when it comes to communication because I know there are times when people just, you know, they fill dead air or they're, they're you know, um, kind of scared of the silence as it were. So I'm really a big fan of that concept of embrace the silence and embrace the pause. Um, but when we're talking in terms of communication, we often think of the whole, you know, I need to be saying something to be communicating and that, that's not always quite true and we're going to explore that a little bit today. So to open, we were going to ask the question around what is your pet peeve? So I'm just going to reopen this for a few moments for those of you who are just joining us. And once you take a moment, pop into the, the text box below and type in what are your pet peeves. And I'll just kind of read a couple of these off as we go. So um, allowing some people to catch up with us here. Uh, first of all, right out of the gate, Sue, the amount of communication required. It seems excessive at times. Um, absolutely, and it's it's. I love your wording there, Sue, because you said you know, the amount of communication required. Um, one of the things we need to be cognizant of is when we're communicating the information out, we already know it. So, you know, it feels like it can be excessive. It feels like we have to do too much. Um, from K, repetition, and um, I'm going to guess since it's a pet peeve, one K, what you're really saying here is you get annoyed by the repetition. So we get into this bit of a dichotomy here around have we said it enough time that it's landing without being too much that it becomes you know that repetitive. Um, emails that are unwantedly CC'd. Oh my goodness, yes, for everyone's input. Oh, Karin. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, um, just, you know, having having that stuff coming in from, you know, 20 different 20 different places and it's like I'm going to CC everyone in the world and my other pet peeve is people who who do the respond to say you know okay or thanks or it's like we, we can let it we can let it finish here right um, from Julie being talked to like a child absolutely we want to be addressed with that that level of respect for sure uh, Richard some folks just don't listen well enough um, I'm not explaining things well enough most of the time uh, I'm not sure which. <laughs> so thank you, Richard, for, for a bit of that, that self-awareness. Um, absolutely. My, my wife's favorite hashtag is, is hashtag read for comprehension. Uh, amazed at the number of people who, you know what, they missed the message. Uh, from Laura, lack of clarity. Absolutely. Um, we can actually have that on both sides. Okay. Um, from Semiti, apologies if I got your name pronounced wrong. Um, the reiteration of the content because the receiver could not be clearly understood. Um, absolutely. So it's the, you know, having to reiterate over and over again that can get can get frustrating, and it can happen on both sides as well. So if you're having difficulty receiving, and it's like, you know, I, I couldn't hear you. You know, could you repeat that again? And there's times when I know I've done this, I've sort of given up a little bit because it's it it yeah, starts to get a bit excessive. Lack of clarity on ownership of issues. Everyone copied on everything, right? The whole CYA thing happening. Unwanted information in communication, which overshadows required information from Joe. Thank you, Joe. Yes, brevity is king. Um, you know, it's funny because it's, it's, you know, people put in way too much stuff. And, and uh, my wife has a, a favorite expression. Um, she works in the court systems. And they'll, they'll ask the question, does anything turn on this? 
like, is it important or you know, can we cut that out? Um, saw a brilliant article years ago, this is going back about 20 years, um, on editing. And they, they printed the article with half the words literally physically crossed out with strike through. And uh, the instructions were to read the article twice. First with the extra words and second without. And you know, you, you read the article and it was the exact same article. There was, there was nothing lost when they cut the words in half. Uh, just a, a fantastic example of that, absolutely. Um, ambiguity, absolutely. So the vague lengthy emails. So ambiguity can also be too short, can be too long with all kinds of you know not important details. Erica, I'm loving this one. Not targeting your audience. Absolutely. We've got to make sure that we're we're giving them the information they need. Uh, people getting off topic, guilty as charged, Luke, absolutely. Uh, taking on too much without getting to the point. Oh sorry, talking too much without getting to the point. Yes. Um, the multitasker, oh my god. Drives me nuts. People, you know, you're talking to someone face to face, and they're pulling out their phone and they start chatting or texting or doing whatever. Um, absolutely, uh, mansplaining from Troy. <laughs> yep, absolutely. And then finally from Thomas, too much information. Absolutely. So loving these answers, guys. Thank you so much. Um, from Diane, choosing the wrong communication channel. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So hopefully we'll we'll work through some tools, techniques, some concepts today that can help you address some of those pet peeves and and not um, not not uh, go in those directions. So you know I wanted to to bring in one of mine and one of my pet peeves is people using language uh, inappropriately. And and when I say inappropriately, um, you know, let's 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 state it simply and plainly, right? So this is a favorite image of mine, uh, activate switch to operate. And I'm sure you've seen this around. It's, it's for those automatic doors, you know, you press the button, the door opens for you, right? Um, but here's the thing, you look at that sign and what, what does it mean? Activate switch. How do you activate a switch, right? Uh, to operate, to operate what? And it's like, you know, how about this, press the button to open the door? Because really that's what you're doing, you're opening a door and you're pressing a button. Right or like press here, right? But activate switch. It's it's one of those things where it's the language that we choose, and you know you see stuff like this, and you think you know who who created that, who 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 came up with that, right? Um, so fortunately, and and you notice it's the Stanley Company. Um, this is uh, I was in an office yesterday, in fact, and I saw this as a wave to open, and it's also by Stanley too. So they've they've gotten their 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 language a little bit better. Um, <coughs> To me, this was much, much clearer. It's like wave and the door opens. And you know, I took a picture of the of the, the switch itself, but it's right beside the door. So it's you know, I think a pretty obvious one at that point. So, you know, sometimes we use language that that you know may make sense to us in a particular context. Um, but you know, we want to be thinking about what language is going to make sense to our audience, to so that, that person who's passing by and, and reading it. Um, I was in the grocery store the other day, and I looked up at the, you know, at the top of the shelf there, and noticed a bunch of boxes stacked up, at, you know, above the, the grocery store shelves, and in big letters on it, the side it said "handle like eggs," right? Um, and I thought, what a great way to put it, because it's, you know, it was fragile. They didn't want the, you know, the the contents of the the box broken, you know, jostled around that sort of thing. Just handle like eggs, you know, very clear, very simple. Okay, so let's do a quick little poll, and our poll today. Um, is asking the simple question, uh, where should you um, focus first? And I'm going to put the, the, just emphasize the word first here because I'm not suggesting that we drop any of these. I think they're all important, but where should you focus first? Okay, got some great answers, got lots of people feedback here. I'm going to end the poll here and share the results. 
view the votes. So, oh, no, sorry. Uh, you should be seeing the, the poll. Oh, there it is, sorry. Broadcast results, that always helps. We've got a pretty even split here between the audience and the objective. A couple of people saying facility and topic. No one said timing, so that, that was actually a good thing. I like that, thank you. Um, here's my take on this, folks. Uh, I'm very solidly on you should be focusing on the objective first. Now, the common advice is focus on the audience. Personally, I'm going to say audience is second. Because here's the thing you want to do even before you say what is your audience, what do they look like, who are they, and how can I adjust? Why? Why are we doing this communication? What is the purpose of it? Okay, what is the objective? From that, now we're going to say how do we get there? Right? Um, and I call this the WIIFM. What's in it for me? Um, and I was introduced to WIIFM many, many years ago. I uh, absolutely love it. And it's the what's in it for me, WIIFM radio station, are you tuned in? Why are we doing this communication? What's its purpose in life? What's the outcome? Do you want to get people to move to action? Is it just to transfer information? You know, what does all of that look like? Then we start thinking about our audience. So we really want to be um, asking that question first. Now let's think about the vehicle. Uh, we're going we're gonna to round out our, our time together today with, with the audience piece. Um, one of the concepts of communication is simplex versus duplex. Now, duplex communication is when you can both transmit and receive simultaneously at the same time. If you think about modern phones, I'm on the phone, I'm holding the headset up to my, my ear, I'm talking, I can hear you, we can actually talk at the same time and we can both hear each other. So even while I'm talking, I can hear you talking. That's duplex communication. When we're in the room together, we actually have duplex communication. Simplex communication is the old concept of if you think about those old radios and you would you would you know see them on, on movies and things where they'd you know press the button to go into transmit mode, they would transmit their message and they would say over. And what you're basically saying is I'm switching it over to you. Right? This is a form of simplex communication. So I can either transmit or I can receive. Now if I do email, for example, email is a simplex form of communication. I type my message, I hit send. Um, to some extent, the chat box that we're using is kind of simplex because while I'm typing, you can't see what I'm, I'm typing until after I hit send. Um, so it's, it's kind of a little bit almost bridging the gap because you can type while I type and then we both hit send and you know they kind of both show up. But we want to think about that for a moment. And when we have the face-to-face -face or phone conversation, we have the duplex communication. We can hear, we can, we can transmit, we can receive. We don't have to do any switching back and forth. Email, on the other hand, is 100% simplex communication. You hit send, right? You compose that message, you edit it, you can even save it in draft. You hit send, the other person reads it, then they, hit the, they send back. So, Technically, you're in an either receive or transmit mode. You're never in both at the same time. Now, I threw speakerphone in there. And the reason I did that is what a lot of people don't realize is most speakerphones are simplex. And what they do is they automatically switch between transmit and receive mode uh, based on the noise. So they do this automatic switching back and forth. Right? They do this automatic switching back and forth. And this is why when you're on that conference call and someone's making a bit of ambient noise, you know, they're tapping their finger, clicking their pen, they cough, the speed the, the phone sort of cuts out for a second. So picture this, you're sitting on the on a conference line, similar to what we're doing today, and you know, person in room A is speaking. And there's person, there's people in room B and room C and room D and so on, and you're you're somewhere down the line and you're listening. So person in room A is talking, you can hear them, and then person in room B coughs. And the phone system then kicks in and it switches room A's phone from transmit mode to receive mode. And people in room A hear the cough, but of course the person who's talking continues to talk, but it cuts out. So while the cough occurs or while that extra noise occurs, 
it cuts out and you can't hear the speaker. This is what's going on with a, with a typical speakerphone. Now, I've actually been noticing that some of the more modern speakerphones, and it's only been very recently, are, are, are moving towards duplex, where you can actually have it go in both directions. Did an engagement with a client recently, and we were using a, a telepresence technology. And we wanted to do um, three different sites here in Toronto, a couple sites down in the States. And my concern was this whole simplex versus duplex thing. So we went in and, and did a test. We, we logged into the three sites. And my test for them was to say, OK, here's what we're going to do. I need you two on the other end to start talking, and we're, all three of us are going to talk at the same time, which we did. And we could hear all three of us. So while I was talking, they were hearing me while they were talking, and I was talking over top of them. I could hear them. They could hear me. It worked seamlessly. It was brilliant. So we ended up using the technology, and it worked really, really well. And it's interesting, because we've used you know, this, this web presence technology many times in the past. And one of the biggest challenges that I've identified is the audio. So you're, you're, you know, you're trying to have that presence in the room, and it's, it's cutting in and out, because you know, someone makes, makes that bit of noise. So really think about that when you're starting to get into your communication. And this is why we often do you know, the rules as it were, um, of our conference calls. And we say, OK, well, we're going to mute everyone. And then we are going to uh, only unmute when uh, you have questions. You know, So we're going we're to keep everyone on mute. We'll have a place for questions. We'll spot, stop and pause. This is where things like the chat window becomes very useful, because what we've effectively done is created a duplex communication model. My transmit is audio. Your transmit is text. And you know, hence, while I'm talking, you could type, and then you know, as soon as your typing appears, I can I can receive and respond to that. So there's some ways of working around those technical challenges. Okay, so we're gonna move into our next poll, and I want to ask you which is more engaging, lecture or a discussion? Let's give you guys a few moments to vote. OK, we've got our votes in. I'm just going to end that poll. Um, got, got quite a few people voting. And it is absolutely 100% unanimous. I should have just, yeah, this is a rhetorical question. 100%. Um, the, um, the, uh, there we go. 100%, the, you know, which is more engaging, lecture or discussion? And 100% came back with discussion. Absolutely. So. You know, as I was kind of putting this together, I'm kind of thinking about, okay, what are the ways that we can increase that engagement? You know, what are the ways that we can, you know, increase that retention? And I was thinking about that whole concept of of transmit only versus transmit and receive, and, and having that discussion. So I thought, since we we raised the topic, I would give a, a definition here, and this is my favorite definition of a lecture: the process of transferring the written notes from the professor's notebook to the student's notebook without passing through either mind. <laughs> So a, a good uh, training associate of mine uh, has that as one of as their definition. Um, just love that one. But a discussion. Now th this is a quote from George Bernard Shaw, and I just I absolutely love this one. If you have an apple and I have an apple and we exchange those apples, I will still well we will still each have one apple. But if you have an idea and I have an idea and we exchange ideas, then each of us will have two ideas. Now, this is one of the beauties of discussion and communication and, and, and exchange of information, because it, it naturally inherently multiplies the information. Now, we ask that question, which is more engaging, lecture versus discussion? And unanimously, it was discussion. Here's why. It goes back to WIIFM, what's in it for me. If we think about a lecture, Typically, that lecture is done from the standpoint of the lecturer. They have some piece of wisdom or information they want to share. So what do they do? They go into transmit mode. They use simplex communication, and they just broadcast. 
as we're a discussion, we're actually having a back and forth. Right? Now, why is that more engaging? Because now it's about you. Right? We're sitting in this room, there's 12 odd people sitting around with us. We're sitting there listening. We got one person talking, 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 and yeah, this isn't really relevant to me. I'm kind of bored. This isn't, you know, really super engaging. But when it's my turn to talk, okay, I'm engaged. I'm there. And people often ask me in the context of, of managing projects and, you know, working in, in training, how do we get people to buy in? Well, here's how you get them to buy in. Get them to participate. Get them to talk. We've shown that here today. If I lecture to you, you're going to disengage. You're going to get bored. Right? If we have a discussion, okay, we're going to be much more engaged. And it all goes back to that whole concept of what's in it for me. Now, when we have a conversation, when we have communication, we want to balance it. It's in both directions. So we have transmit and we have receive. We need to consider how do we get it flowing in both directions. When we think of communication, I need to communicate my message out. Okay, I need to transmit. Absolutely. But I can actually communicate my message out through receiving because I want to hear from those folks. Thinking about some of those pet peeves that you identified at the beginning, uh, being talked to like a child, uh, the repetition piece. Well, here's a thought. How about if I do some receiving to find out what level are you at? What level do you want to, to have this discussion so I don't end up talking to you like a child or, or mansplaining? Um, you know, what is your context so that we make sure that we understand I understand where you are so that I can either get you to where you need to be to understand what I'm, I'm needing to get, transmit, um, but also I don't get redundant and I don't go over things that you already know. So we have this transmit and receive. We want to have a balance of both when we get into good effective communication. We do need to consider the technology. Now, don't use technology as an excuse, folks. Oh, I can't do receive because it's a webinar and I've got 53 people on the line. Well, guess what? We just did, right? We have had, you've had multiple opportunities and you still have opportunities for you to send to me. So as the person communicating, I have left the receive channel open the entire time. In fact, not only did I do that, I started with a receive channel. I started saying, I want you folks to tell me, talk to me, give me input. Right Now, we do this in our training classes every single class. We start off with what do you want to get out of today? What do you want to get out of this session? And the reason we do this is so that I can tailor the session to make it more relevant to you and what you want. I turn it from a lecture into a discussion. And now it becomes engaging. Now it becomes interesting. Now my communication is much more effective because you are engaged, you're tuned in. You're, you're, you're not only listening, but you're participating. You're helped guide that conversation so we can avoid those pet peeves like the, the you know, putting it at the wrong level, either too high or too low, um, like the repetition. Okay, we've got that. We've got that understanding. We can use it to confirm that understanding. So when you're considering that technology, are we into simplex or duplex communication? Have those vehicles available and find ways to receive. Yes, it gets more challenging when you've got a bigger audience. So uh, I remember doing a, a session for a client uh, many years ago, and we had a couple hundred people to get this information out to. So we decided to do a web-based, much more of a transmit, much similar to what we're doing today. But I still made sure that we had vehicles for receiving. So we had the chat box open. We would pause and turn on the audio for everyone periodically. And we'd let them know ahead of time. You know, we, we said, okay, we're going to go through, we've got five modules. We're going to go through each module. We're going to pause at the end of each module for conversation and discussion, questions, all that kind of fun stuff. <clears throat> so find ways to receive. Um, it's, it's a bit of a cop-out when we, when we start to say, oh, well, I can't because it's many to one, or, or one to many. <coughs> so let's figure that out. Okay. Now, I want to shift gears a little bit. And we talked about uh, earlier, I said, you know, what's the first thing? We had a pretty 50-50 split there around the objective versus the audience. Talked a little bit about the objective. Let's shift gears. Let's talk about the audience. Now, when you're delivering to a larger audience, yes, we need to 
do this on a more of a aggregate level. But what I want to do today is I want to I want to kind of focus in on the personality types and ask that simple question: How do they like to be communicated to, or how do they like to communicate? And then, are you using your preferred style, or are you using theirs? Now, there is some generational components here. Um, you know, you see you see younger generation today, the millennials and so forth. Um, They'll have conversations on text, and they'll be, you know, sitting with an earshot. Um, not necessarily my personal preferred, but you know, it, it is, it it is, you know, if it's working for them, right? So we want to think about, you know, what does the audience look like? The larger the audience, the more you need to provide those multiple vehicles, those multiple ways. What we're going to do right now is we're going to look at from a personality perspective, and we're going to kind of Dig it down a little bit into how we can communicate more effectively to specific personality types. So what I'm going to just just walk you through real quick is a union-based model um, of a union-based model of um, personality types, and you've seen this. Um, it you've, it's called DISC. Uh, you'll see it called Myers Briggs. Uh, you'll see it called. Um, I want some of the other ones. Insights, colors, Berkman. It, it comes up in a number of different forms. This is kind of the basic core to it. So the first thing I want to take a look at is the vertical continuum. And at the top here, we have the proactive or the extrovert. So these are the folks that tend to speak quickly. These are the folks who like to finish your sentences for you. Um, you know, they, they tend to, to move and react very, very, very fast, right? So they're they're kind of you know more 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 quicker in their pace. The reactive or the introverts at the bottom end of this spectrum. These are the folks who um, they're going to be a little bit softer in their their approach, a little bit more thoughtful, a little bit more reflective. Okay, so I just want you to take a moment and, and reflect for yourself. Are you the more proactive extrovert, or are you more the reactive introvert? And for me, I am very much at the top of the spectrum. So I've actually I put myself kind of up here on that spectrum. Okay. So think about where you where you feel you are. Now on the horizontal spectrum. We're looking at the orientation or the focus. Are you more task focused? So, are you more focused on the task, get the job done, or are you more people focused or people oriented? Where is your Where is your passion and where is your your kind of importance lie? Those who are more task focused, they're going to be a little bit more around, you know, business, get the job done. Let's not Let's not worry if we, you know, kind of upset some people along the way. If I'm more people focused, it's more about the relationship. It's more about, you know, the team and, and working together. So while I'll still get the job done, I may, you know, I'm going to make sure that the team's good and that, that we're all getting along. And I may may take a little bit longer and, and put some investment there. Now, when you're looking at this horizontal task versus uh, people, and again, you'll be somewhere on the spectrum. It is a balance, so it's not one or the other. Um, but I kind of like to look at this as a bank account. And when I'm making a withdrawal, I'm focusing on the task. And when I'm making a deposit, I'm focusing on the people. So what I'm going to do is you know, adjust that and flip that and do this in a way that's going to A, get the job done while not sacrificing the relationships. And there's times when I may increase my focus around the people to build that relationship to kind of set some foundation for later versus other times when I may focus on the task a little bit more you know because we've got a bit of an urgency to get it done what I'd like you to do is think about where do you typically go right because in all of these personality profiles they're not an excuse you can go to any one of the four corners so for me I've already mentioned that I'm kind of high on the proactive extrovert scale <coughs> Excuse me, but I'm very kind of in the center around the task people side. So I kind of place myself right about here. 
And what this tells me is that in, in that kind of generic language, I'm an expressive. Um, so if this was if this was insights, that's yellow. If this was disk, that's I, and and so on. So think about where you are. Are you a driver? Are you task oriented, very quick? You know that daring, direct, decisive. Are you an expressive? You like to talk it through, often very big and gesturing with the hands. Um, are you more of an amiable, which is you get along with the crowd, work very well and well in a group environment, and and you know, have that tendency to more go with the flow to, to stay with the group? Or are you more analytical where you read that data, you go through every every piece and, you know, you find those mistakes on page 38 and, and you make sure that it is, you know, T's are crossed and I's are dotted. So I want to think which, and the key word here, folks, is predominantly represents you. Okay? And then I'm going to get you to think about what is your preference in in communication. How do you prefer, prefer to be communicated to? So just to, to kind of finish this out, drivers typically very direct to the point, business-like, expressives, they want to talk it through, more social, more personal recognition, amiables, again the social to group journey, the inclusive piece, the analytics correct, concise, very data focused, it's the details. So here is your chance to help us identify how we can best work with you. So I'd like you to pop into one of those four quadrants, okay, and um, there we go, I'll just get this started. I want you to pop into whichever of the quadrant makes sense for you and type in how can I adjust and work with you based on you being that type. Okay, so we'll give everyone just a few moments to fill that in. So pop into whichever corner best describes you. Okay, and how can I adjust? How, how do you want to be communicated to? Give everyone about another 30 seconds, a minute to uh, to put some entries in. Okay. <clears throat> So we got some good entries for the drivers, expresses, and analyticals. Ah, there we go. The amiables are starting to come in. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the note here on my screen that tells me people are typing in those screens. And uh, uh, just when you finish typing, just press enter, and that should post it. OK. Now, um, so I do this, this exercise in, in class a lot when we, when we teach this concept. And what we do is we get people to actually physically get up and walk to four flip charts, you know, one in each corner kind of thing. And, and every time we do this, the drivers are done first. It, it cracks me up because they zip over there. They're very quick, you know, that, they're that extroverted, proactive, you know, energy. Um, they're very task focused. So it's like, boom, boom, get the job done. And then they stand and turn and look at the rest of the group and go, what's taking the rest of them so long? <laughs> um, and, and that was actually exactly what happened here today. I had two or three entries popping in on, on those drivers like, bing, 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 let's go. Now, I did mine first just to kind of lead you off and, you know, I'd, I'd sort of plan that ahead. So, um, but yeah, that was just totally, absolutely. Lots of conversation stuff on the expressives. Um, analyticals, you guys took a little longer to get started, but then bing, 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 stuff comes in quick. Right? And that's very classic for analyticals because they, they want to think about it first. Now, 
if we were together in the room uh, doing this, all the folks who ended up in the corner with it as the amiables, you'd be having this conversation, this discussion around, you know, what makes sense and are you okay with that? And, um, you know, which is fantastic because then it becomes much more of a, a kind of group effort. And, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's interesting that you guys took a little bit longer to, to start to get some entries in there. And uh, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's a little bit of a tougher environment here because you're not working in that, that, that team. Um, so anyways, let's walk through these. And, and again, I'm just going to emphasize two things. First of all, this is a spectrum. So if I look at the horizontal and say, you know, task versus versus people focused, it's like, well, I am task focused, but I, you know, care about the team and want to make sure we, we get together and, you know, get the job done. We're not leaving anyone behind, you know, this sort of thing. You, you're going to be a balance of both of them. Right, you're always going to be a balance. You're going to be somewhere on that spectrum. There's a very small percentage of the population that's like right in the center, and a very small pop percentage of the population that ends up at, at you know kind of one of the four corners. But also, I also want to emphasize this is not an excuse. This is not a oh I'm a driver, therefore you know I can't slow down and and consider people. No, you can. It's just going to take you a little bit more energy. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got here. We'll start off at the top left with the drivers. Uh, I love that first entry. Straight to the point. Get her done, right? Um, no beating around the bush. Facts first, options later, right? Love it. Um, yes, again, straight to the point. Keep the small talk to a minimum. Um, worked with someone who uh, very high on this spectrum of of drivers. Kind of, you know, one of those few people who's kind of very much out in that corner. And it was just business. But I loved working with them because I could walk in and boom, I could get an answer real quick. You know, this this honest and to the point, absolutely, right? Let's get the job done, right? This isn't personal. Um, get straight to the task at hand, absolutely. So you know what? You know, walk into this gentleman's office and business, need this, got that, good, thanks, bye, out of here, right? Now the expressives, and uh, this is where I identify. I'm an expressive. Now I am pretty close to that 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 boundary line, so it's pretty easy for me to to go over into driver's mode versus expressive mode. Let's have a conversation about it. And I love Ryan's answer here. Let me talk, right? If you want to work with an expressive, you've got to let them talk. Frustrate them when you don't let them have a say, right? Discussion to get an agreement, right? Again, discussion from Steve, both sides here, right? Uh, provide time for me to weigh in, right? Um, speak to the height of my intelligence, not the base of it. Oh, love that one, Sarah. Thank you. Um, personal... Um, um, or not, um, personal acknowledgement of, of your of your own self is very high on expressives and their needs, for example, right? So, so you know, wanting to to kind of recognize what you bring to the table, right? Um, hands on with examples, absolutely, right? You want to have that conversation. Um, storytelling works great with expressives. You know, conversation to know the other's point of view. So again, there's that that more of that people focus side, right? Like to have a discussion, inclusive. Um, uh, if done well, you gather more information to hopefully get a better decision from Richard. I totally agree, Richard. Absolutely. Face-to-face. -face. So having face-to-face -face conversations, <coughs> excuse me, having those face-to-face -face conversations, having that opportunity to, to talk and, and uh, give that input um, is really, really key for expressives. Expressives process by talking. So you'll find they'll often start with, you know, I haven't fully baked the idea yet, but let's talk it through, let's work it out. You know, they love doing that, right? Um, explain the thought process from Erica. I love Sharon's entry to, to finish this off. Ask how was your weekend? Yes. You know that the high driver, you're going to step in, business, bing, 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 done, out. Expresses, ah, let's talk it through. Let's see how you're doing, how you're feeling, how's the wife, kids, you know, how'd the weekend go, that kind of stuff. So worked with a, a high expressive and I'd always make sure I plan a little bit of extra time to go chat. Right, it was it was a very social thing. We'd often you know go for coffee and got a lot of work done. It's usually done in the coffee shop and lots of discussion. Okay, so we're going to move to the the um, the lower two here. We got the amiables and the analytics. Now on the vertical spectrum, we're now moving into the introvert side of things. We're now moving into the more moderate paced. Um, so Luke, to the point, but face to face to be able to gauge that reaction, right? So excellent, yeah. This is that that people focus coming out because they want to see what the reaction is, right? You know, having the face-to-face -face conversations is very important for amiables. Um, collaborative and consensus-driven uh, from from Kieran. Totally agree, absolutely. This is really a um, you know 
how do we work together as a team? How do we, you know, gather all that input <clears throat> from Pamela? What is the objective that we are trying, that we are looking to achieve? And and thank you for that one, Pamela, because all four of the quadrants can be very task uh, focused. You know, in getting the job done, but notice the language that we are looking to achieve. So, if we had a driver enter that sentence, they would have written, "What is the objective I am looking to achieve?" It's usually more self-oriented versus more team-oriented. Okay, um, allow sufficient time to consider my answers, and not condensing the conversation. Um, Amiables need to talk it through, but they also need time, right? Both amiables and, and analytics, they typically want a little bit more time to process. So you pop something on them in a meeting, you surprise them with something in a meeting, they're going to want the time to process and think about it before they respond. As we're drivers, they're going to quick, decisive, daring, direct, boom, here it is. Um, expresses, they want to talk it through. Right? So they're okay with being surprised as long as you're allowed to chat about it afterwards. Drivers are okay with being surprised. They tend to see it as a little bit more of a challenge and they'll raise to that challenge. Analyticals and amiables, not so much with the good with the surprise. They want to be able to have time to process that. So when I'm going into a meeting with an, with an amiable, um, you know what, and I, and I know there's going to be some stuff there. I'm going to plan a little bit more time. I'm going to I'm going to give them the ability and the and the the time to consider before they answer, right? So allow sufficient time to consider my answers, right? So that they can they can consider what they're going to say. And I find it very interesting because I was in a meeting uh, a little while back, about a year ago or so, <clears throat> and there was three very high expressives in the room, myself being one of them, and we're talking this and talking that, blah blah blah, lots of conversation, and and I. Actually, the, the person I'm about to um, identify is, is an analytical. So we, ha we did have an amiable and we also had an analytical. Much more quiet in the meeting. Now, they're still very engaged. They're just not talking. So in that meeting setting, they're going to be a little bit quieter. They're going to be a little bit more observatory. Um, then the analytic pops in right near the end and says something that's just like absolutely brilliant. And we're all like, OK, why didn't you say that at the beginning? Well, they needed the time to process, right? OK, so let's hop over to the analytics now. Um, first of all, right out of the top, K, thank you so much. Just the facts, please. Right? Remember, very task focused, very numbers focused. Um, don't like socializing too much. So recognizing from NM, thank you. Uh, recognizing, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of socializing. Let's keep it to a minimum. We're here to get a job done. So again, we're seeing that, that higher focus on the, the uh, task side. Uh, more examples of data to make things relevant. If you're trying to convince an analytical, if you're trying to change their mind, show them the facts. You can tell stories up and down. You can say how you feel, all kinds of stuff. Change their mind, show them the facts, right? Um, get to the point, be clear from Kimberly, absolutely. Um, facts, numbers, yes, no, solution. Joe, I love the way you wrote that. Because it's just, it's it's brilliant. It's perfect. It's like, bing, bing, bing. There we are. Right? You know, very clear, concise, very very short. Um, again, from NM, uh, much rather work on my own and then delegate as needed. We do see that coming out of analyticals at times because it's, it, you know, you're more focused on the task. You're very focused on the numbers. Um, you can often get frustrated with this whole opinion collaborative piece, right? As where diagonally opposite for the expressives, you know, get them to work on their own in isolation. It's a little bit torturous for us. Um, you know, so we want to we want to kind of you know find that balance. And I'm going to come back to that concept in a few moments. Um, facts, precision from Michelle. Uh, want information or ask up front so I can digest and respond. Very key there, Pamela. Is time to digest, right? So if I'm going into a meeting with an analytical, I'm going to provide the data, the report ahead of time, and I can almost guarantee you they will read it through. Drivers won't read it through. They'll want to see that it's done. Expressives, they'll want to talk it through. Amiables, they're, they're a little bit more likely to read it as well, but it's more of the group discussion, so they'll be checking with their teammates and did everyone get it. Um, from Diane, 
Um, sorry, I'm Vince Peggy. Uh, provide the facts. Follow up with text is helpful. So again, the written down, again, very black and white, the clearer piece. Uh, be specific and concise from Diane. Absolutely understand the facts from NM again. Uh, factual from Olga. Yes, totally agree. Uh, Sharon, need to know why. May ask five times why. <laughs> yes, the five whys. I love that technique. Um, yeah, really wanting to get down to that that underlying. And, and analyticals are fantastic for doing that kind of work. Um, need to have a thorough understanding of the process. Yes, analyticals are often, they, they show themselves as being very process driven. So when I'm working with my analyticals, Amiable's like, like process as well. It's very much like here's step one, here's step two, here's step three. You know, and you can really kind of map it out for folks. Um, they really like that. <clears throat> so to to kind of um, to kind of wrap this up, uh, it's when you get into the diagonally opposite corners that you start to have this high potential for conflict. So here I am. I'm up here, right? I'm I'm this this high on the proactive extrovert scale, um, and you know, I'm dealing with, let's say, an analytical, right? So I'm dealing with, with someone who's on the analytical side. So not only do I have to slow down, I have to, you know, slow the, the pace of my speech and, and, you know, I like to jump around and pop, pop, pop. Um, but I also have to shift my focus from people into the data side. So this is where your biggest challenges are. Now, it doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means it's going to be difficult, okay? So you know, when we're working with people, um, there's a, there's an amiable I work with quite a lot, and I find when I get into you know the discussion, right? When I get into that that sort of um, higher conflict mode, what's happened is I've moved my behaviors moved over into here, <clears throat> right? And I reflect on that and realize, okay, I've 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 gone into that zone, and and especially for this person, that really doesn't work. So what I need to do is I need to not only pull myself back into this side, but I also need to slow things down, right? So we want to think about the type of people that we're working with. What is the, their preference? How do they want to be communicated to? Okay. Now, Julie's asked a really good question here that I want to address, which is, can you be proactive and an introvert? And the short answer is yes. And there's two ways that this is going to look like. So first of all, um, and this is why I added the word extrovert, introvert, because the, the proactive, reactive, um, it, it kind of implies that I don't plan ahead. And when we talk about proactive versus reactive, I'm not talking about how much you plan ahead. It's more about your energy state. So words I like to use uh, at the top of the spectrum is more faster paced. Um, <clears throat> and then when we get to the, the lower end of the spectrum is more moderate paced. Okay, so th those I, I, I find those words tend to tend to resonate a little bit better with folks. Because like I say, it is about um, your energy levels and your pacing as opposed to uh, being an extrovert introvert. Now, from a proactive reactive, yes, I can be an introvert who plans ahead and who who, you know, plans for the future and who anticipates what's coming, that's a different type of proactive than what we're talking about here. So this is around a personality style as opposed to uh, more of a planning. And I actually find um, folks who are analytics, uh, typically they're, they're very, you know, um, um, risk managed. So they'll, they'll, they'll be thinking it ahead and they'll be kind of looking at the, you know, the possible, you know, ways that things can play out and stuff. So they, they do tend to, you know, sort of plan ahead that version of proactive versus the very much more the I'm here and in presence. Okay. So let's wrap this up today because I'm seeing we're we're just approaching our hour. Some key concepts that I wanted you to walk out with today. First of all, very key, balance. You want to balance between the transmit and the receive. Now, when we talk about communication, and especially when we put this into the context of project communication, we tend to, in, in my humble opinion, we tend to overdo the transmit um, at the expense of the receive. I mean, we've, we've got important data to, to send out to people, status reports to send out, um, you know, 
project plans to send out. So we transmit, 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 transmit. And what happens is you effectively become a lecturer, right? So now you've gotten into that mode of only transmitting. And unanimously, we all agreed today, a, um, a, a conversation, a discussion is more engaging than a lecture. So let's make our communication a discussion. Now, excuse me, just because I'm having a discussion doesn't mean I'm necessarily able to adjust the plan. Doesn't mean I'm going to change the report, right? But if you want to engage people better and if you want to get that communication received better, receive yourself, okay? Focus on the object first. I meant to write objective there. Um, so focus on the objective first. Why are you doing this communication? What's its purpose? Right? And after you've answered that, then you can start to think about the audience and the method and, and so on. Right? And then finally, and um, I, I, I forgot to mention this at the earlier, but the platinum rule. Now, we all know the golden rule. The golden rule is uh, do unto others how you would have them done unto you. Right? Or you want, you want to be done unto. Um, the platinum rule is do unto others how they want to be done unto. So what we're saying here is adjust your communication style to match the audience of who you're communicating with. Now, if this is a one-on-one -on -one communication, so Scott and I are having a meeting, much easier to do because, of course, I can, I can adjust to meet Scott's style. Now I start to look for what are the indicators to tell me what is Scott's style, right? So is he a driver? Is he an expressive? Is he an amiable? Is he an analytical? And hence, I can then, you know, make that adjustment. That's the platinum rule, folks. Adjust to the style of communication that best suits your audience. When you have a single person, then it becomes, okay, I can do this much more directly and personally than if I have a larger group audience like what we have today. Okay. So, that's our session on communications. I hope you found it useful. Uh, your PDU code is there. I'm going to leave the chat box open for a few minutes if anyone has any questions or comments or thoughts. Uh, thank you guys so much for your participation today.